Welcome to the Voc Talk Cafe by Les Après Cours. And this is a place where we chat live about teaching a trade in today's world. And today, this is very exciting. We have the second of our new series that we started in 2024. And today is the beginning of the Dear Teacher Hotline series. Before we start, let's just do a little bit of housekeeping. Remember, all the information that we're showing uh, during the session is housed on the Après Cours vocational training website. Under the articles, you can find the recordings, the summaries, the archive. You can find the collaborative document at the top right where we take notes. Uh, the resources are shared in the document that's accessible at the bottom. And remember the calendar that's there. You subscribe to the Google Calendar so you can have it synced to your work calendar and you'll always be able to know what's going on during uh, the Après Cool sessions. So remember, this is a pilot project. So we are really happy for you to participate and are your suggestions are really important to us to be able to create a space for you. So definitely let us, give us some feedback. Let us know everything you have to say is worth saying. So we're gonna drop the link to the exit ticket right now in the chat if you wanna go ahead and open it, but you don't have to fill it out until the end of the session. It's just so it's easily accessible. All right, so today, February 5th, we have our first Dear Teacher Hotline. And we are gonna be talking about a lesson of the day. And we have our host, we have a new host with us. So it's Mark and myself as usual. And we have a new host. We have Joanne Aubry, who is an education consultant at Lester B. So welcome, Joanne. I'm glad you're here to host with us. Thank you for having me. Today's goals. All right. So we want to look at a work exa worked example. We're going we're gonna to do this learning, but through something that already exists. We want to identify a few key elements, not all of them, but something that we can sort of mull over and play with. We want to describe how these elements are really important for student learning. And then at the end, we're going to discuss uh, how to adapt this tool to your reality. Because remember, you will have access to this tool and you can make a copy and play with it and do whatever you want to it. So the way the session works is it's divided into two parts. There's the recorded session, that's the, the, the 15 to 20 minute presentation where we talk about the topic and we bring up our key elements. And then we go to the interactive part where we're gonna participate, we're gonna have a discussion, you can play with the document, you can ask any questions you might have, even questions that are not related to this topic. Then we're actually gonna come back to the presentation side and we're gonna start the recording again and we have our little five minute tech capsule at the very end, but the interactive part is not recorded. And this is to preserve a safe space so that we can feel comfortable with the uncomfortableness of learning and growing. All right, right on Lepcon, let's get started. Okay, dear teacher hotline, lesson of the day. Hi there, Frankie, how can I help you? Dear teacher hotline, I have a lot of content that students need to learn and they often don't have enough time to finish today's lesson. Do you have any tips on how to help us out? Sincerely, Flummox Frankie, vocational teacher. All right, Flummox, I'm really glad that you came to us with this. This is gonna be a fun one. Today, we're gonna to explore a lesson of the day and we're gonna explore, we're gonna kind of go after it in four, four elements. We're gonna look at what is this tool? And what are some of the key elements? We're gonna do, we're gonna look at what it does for the teacher as well as what it does for the student. And then we're gonna kind of play with it a little bit and we're gonna talk about how we would customize it for your use. Okay, so this tool, a lesson of the day is designed from the student's perspective. It's different than a lesson plan. It's a consultable document that has a list of the day's activities and it's organized into categories but it really is something that the, the information that the student needs. So let's go ahead and we're gonna explore an example. And I'm gonna drop in the, um, in the chat, I'm gonna drop a link to the document and you can go ahead and open up this document and we can explore this document at the same time how we're gonna explore this. This is an interactive document. And so how we're gonna explore it, oops, is you'll see that there are two different icons. 
The blue icons have the document elements, those key elements that we were talking about, and the red icons talk about the key approaches. So this right now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go to go ahead and go to the lesson of the day, the interactive document. And as you hover over the doc, uh, over the, the icons, you can see it'll, ex it'll, it'll identify the different parts and it's gonna identify the different approaches. So you can go ahead and play around with that. And I'm gonna come back to our presentation. I'm gonna say, okay, so what, as you're playing around with it, I'm gonna ask you, well, what does it do for the student and what does it do for the teacher? Well, this document communicates the details of the effective learning solution. And it's about the transparency. It's about putting everybody on the same page. A student is gonna wanna know where they're going. They want to know what the learning goals of the day are, and they want to know in, in, in ways that they can understand dealing with the topic of the day. So you can see this is an example from uh, fish and seafood, which is uh, one of the competencies inside the culinary program. And the way it's written, it's, 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 it's written so that the student connects it with the actual learning of the day in the world that they're in using vocabulary that they're familiar with. So you want to try to avoid the education speak as much as poss possible. So yes, we do talk about a learning goal, but we're going to write those learning goals in ways that make sense, right? So if we look at like the third learning goal, oh, we're going to discuss the quality indicators of fresh and frozen fish. Oh, so we're talking about fish today and quality of fish. Oh, right. So we are going to practice correct doneness of lean fish. Oh, so I'm practicing to make sure that the, food, the, the fish is cooked to the way we want it to be cooked. Okay. So this type of a document is really about the transparency. This is what we're focusing on today. You can see below, we have the list of recipes. We have, this is the tools that you're going to do, that you're going to use to, to have those learning goals, right? Below that, we have some of the, sort of the daily organization. And, and, and in this case, this is an example of a, of a document that was used. This is a mid-learning mid document. Competency uh, Fish and Seafood is in the middle of their training. So there are some things already in this doc that, that this document assumes. There's already sort of a way the teacher interacts with the students. And so, for example, here you can see under today's organization, there's a little bit of pre-work because the students are now used to the fact that, oh, I always have a little bit of stuff I need to do ahead of time before I can actually start cooking. So I'm gonna make sure that's in the lesson of the day so that the student, it reminds the student, oh yeah, I, I gotta get that stuff done. Materials that they're gonna need because that often changes. So I'm gonna make sure there's a little list of materials. And then on the right-hand side, you can see that there's the, the organization of the kitchen for the day. So there's the, and, and there's the organization and plan, there's the teacher demonstrations, there's gonna be anything the student needs to hand in, uh, any breaks that are in there, and these bits and pieces of organizational information. I just wanna point out like, this isn't chronological because once again, it, this is a, a middle competency in the program of study. And at this point, the students are starting to take a more proactive role in organizing their daily work. So this is all gonna happen, but in this situation, this is definitely not, the, the students are gonna have a say in, well, when exactly are we gonna have our breaks? And when do we want teacher demonstrations based on the work plans they've come up with? So depending on where the competency falls in the learning of the student, this part might might look a little bit different, okay? But that's why it's not chronological in this one. And then at, back at the top, I also wanna point out like the review part. So there's always some sort of an element in a lesson plan, a lesson of the day that connects previous learning to what you're gonna be doing today. So it connects some of these, these, these already established notions in our head and, and pulling them forward because I'm gonna need them for today's work. So there's a little column there for, remember, 
oh, we're going to pull out information from these previous competencies because today we're going to need it. So it's a little reminder thing. So we're going to continue to explore the document, but now we're going to do it in a more interactive fashion. And we're going to ask, we're going to make a copy and we're going to play with it. And we're going to allow you to ask questions and manipulate it. So just to wrap up this segment, the key takeaways that we have from here is that the student, the, the document is designed, a lesson of the day is designed from the student perspective. It includes the information that they need to situate their learning in their physical learning environment. And what I mean by physical learning environment is where it's happening. In this case, it's a kitchen. But if you were teaching computing support and you were online, that's still their physical learning environment, even though it's digital. Right? The document is easy to use, it's accessible, and it's flexible. So this is a document that's created very quickly. You can see it's pretty bare bones. It didn't have a lot of, I didn't really talk about the design elements of it. it doesn't have a lot of design elements, right? It's a black and white. It uses some headers. It uses a couple of emojis to pull your attention to certain areas, uses bullet points. But a lot of this is copy pasted right out of my lesson plan as the teacher or out of the, the macro planning. So it's a document that's easy to use and flexible and can be adjusted as you need throughout, throughout the competency. All right, it's now your turn to go ahead and adapt the tool for your use. So this is the point where we're gonna stop the recording. I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague from the AC, Marc, who's gonna to talk to us a little bit about some of the tech behind this. Thank you. Well, for those who don't know me, I'm a vocational training consultant with the RECI, which is a network that put, put in place by the Ministry of Education for the development of student skills through technology. In this segment of the Voc Talk Cafe, in just a few minutes, I suggest ideas, resources, or tools relevant to the topic of the day that you can use, hopefully, in your class. Um, it will be too fast to be a tutorial, but I hope it sparks your creativity. For more details in the presentation that we will share, I've put my uh, presentation presenter, presenter's notes and you will be able to access it uh, from there if you want. Today, I wanna pre present the how-to of three items in the document that we examined before uh, using a header section, inserting emojis and inserting bullets in the list. For on each of the following slides, I prepared a screen capture. At the top right, you'll see an example taken from the document that we worked on before. And below you have images of where the menus that I'm talking about are in Microsoft Word Online or in Google Docs. Here you go. So the first item that I want to highlight is to use the header. You'll notice that uh, in uh, the daily lesson document, the header contains the identification of the cohort the competency and the date. There could be lots of other uh, information there, but it's always going to be um, uh, information that needs to be accessible, but that it's not es essential to the uh, task of the day. And by placing it in an area where the attention does not go naturally for the reader, using the header is likely to help students point their focus where it needs to go. By default, the setting is that it will uh, be repeated on every page, but it would it, the, those settings can be uh, changed if you want the header to be only on the first page. In Microsoft, there is a header button at, uh, stay on the previous slide, Robin. Yeah, you see the little header uh, sign at the top right of the document. And in Google, you just double click on the space above the margin to make the header appear. And then you can put the content that you want. Now we're going to change slide to see how we can insert emojis. In the daily lesson document, there are many emojis. For example, there is a clipboard to identify the organization section and a smartphone icon to insist that students bring their personal device Emojis should not be decorative, but have a purpose like summarizing a sentence or identifying a section page. You don't want them to become a distraction. When they become, when they, they can also become is some kind of uh, iconography. They're gonna be signs that the learners recognize on every document, or they can also create your own personal signature that differentiates you from the other uh, instructors. In Microsoft, you open the insert tab 
emojis are at the right and you might need to use the three dot menu to make them appear if your window is a bit narrow in google you go in the drop down insert menu that you will that's where you'll find the emojis and on our the last slide you to insert bullets in a list in the daily lesson document the different learning goals are listed in uh, point form we're in the realm of accessibility here items are justified to the left the transit from one concept to the other is clearly indicated and the continuation from one line to the other is also super clear Remember that the spacing can be adjusted to your needs, for example, between the lines, between the bullet and the margin, or between the bullet and the text. To, you first need to select the text that you want to apply bullets to. In Microsoft, you need to be in the Home tab to find the bullet menu approximately in the center. In Google, you will find it on the right. In both cases, you might have to use the three-dot menu again to make that, those options appear. That concludes my presentation today. I hope that these three tips help you design documents that are conceived with the user experience and the learner's point of view in mind. If you would like to practice using these functions and others, join the digital open sandbox of the Vakta Cafe on April 29th. It will be an opportunity to test and create with Microsoft Word and Google Docs. I'm about to shut up, but before I do, I want to mention that my colleague James Byrne and I are at your service as the RECIVT consultants. Our mission is to support the vocational training educators of all nine English-speaking school boards in Quebec in integrating technology in teaching and in learning. You have the address of, the, of our website on screen. From there, you can contact us via instant messaging, make an appointment directly in our calendars, or, and of course, send us an email. And that's it for this week. Oh, thanks, Mark. That was great. So three, three little tips on how to uh, use the tech to, to modify the document. All right. Well, listen, this has been great. We're almost out of time. But I could invite you to continue this discussion on vt.proceed.ca. Go ahead and sign up and join your trade group and either continue the dis discussion thread in your group or start a new, uh, a new, uh, a new discussion thread and, and get your colleagues in on it. And if you need a hand, go ahead and use the chat function in vt.proceed.ca. Uh, if you have an idea for the Voc Talk Cafe, go ahead and fill out the form that, that, that will drop the link in the chat let us know or you can go ahead and contact us talk to your pet consultant everybody mm -hmm. has access to pet consultants in their yeah. school board so talk mm -hmm. to your pet consultant they're a great yeah. resource yeah. for you yeah. um and then we have the resources of the day and then the next Vogue talk cafe coming up february 12th we will be speaking mm -hmm. with motorized equipment maintenance and we're going to talk about charting student progress mm -hmm. so we hope to see mm -hmm. you there mm -hmm. thanks for coming